We now want to use the same algorithm, slightly adjusted for the 2D problem. So we again want a randomized incremental construction of our trapezoidal map and the data structure that we can use to query it. Let's have a look at one example. So let's say we just start with some segment SOR1. We have the left point L1, the right point R1, so this is the trapezoidal map we get from it. And additionally, we need some data structure. Some, and the point location data structure we want to use is something very similar to a binary search tree, but it's not exactly a tree, and you will see that in one step later. So this is just a directed acyclic graph or a DAG. In this case, in the very beginning, it's still a tree. We have, it's very similar to the KD trees we had in the previous lecture. This line through L1 or the segment through L1 that separates it to a left part, that is the rectangle A, and to a right part. And on the right, we again divide it by the segment through R1 into a right part, which is just the trapezoid D, and a left part. And this is divided by S1 into the bottom part C and the top part B. So we can walk through this data structure and in every step it divides it into two parts. Now let's have a look at the next step. We take our segment S2 and we add it here. What do we have to do? We said in the A1D step we need two steps. First we have to query, figure out where the point lies, and then we have to destroy and rebuild. So let's do something very similar. We take the left point of the segment and we use our data structure to locate where it lies in. And then we figure out it lies in the trapezoid C. And now we just walk along the segment through all the trapezoids in the trapezoidal map until we find the right endpoint. In this case, it's just this trapezoid D. Now, all these trapezoids that we walk through or into on this way, that we have to destroy and we have to rebuild. So, in this case, we only have C and D and we destroy them. And how do we rebuild them? We have our new endpoints L2 and R2, so we have to shoot our rays up and downwards. And that gives us here, instead of just one trapezoid, three trapezoids. One to the left, which is C, and one to the right here, which is D. But now we don't need this part anymore. You see, this ray that went downwards from R1, that now stops at S2. So we don't get this trapezoid here, otherwise we would again get a quadratic size. So we add a dummy point here, we get this new trapezoid, this one, and this one. And this is our new trapezoidal map. How do we update the data structure? That's very similar. We just do exactly the same steps as we had here. So we had our trapezoid C, and we had our trapezoid D, and those we remove. For C, the first step we want uh, to do to separate it is via this segment through L2. And then this separates it to a left part, which gives us the new C, and to a right part. And in the right part we have to separate through S2. That gives us a top D and a bottom F. What happened here, we destroyed D, we first have to separate it through the segment through R2 gives us a right part, which is just G, and a left part. And the left part is again separated by S2 into E and also into F. And now you see why it's not a tree anymore, because now we have two nodes, two interior nodes that are both S2 and both point to the same trapezoids F. So there are two ways to arrive here. But it's still directed, everything is directed away from the root, and it's acyclic, you cannot go back anymore. So this is a DAC. How does this look like in general? So we have our function trapezoidal map that gets a set of n non-crossing segments. It first builds a bounding box and initializes our two data structures, and then finds a random permutation of the segments. And then in every step, when we add our segment SI, we find all these trapezoids, trapezoid 1 to trapezoid k, 
by just following the segment from the left to the right point. Then we remove them all from our trapezoidal map. And then we build the new trapezoids that are all incident to SI. So these are the new ones here. And then we update the data structure. We remove again these trapezoids. We add the new trapezoids as leaves. And then we add the interior nodes that we need to do the routing. This means here we have many SIs and we have these new boundary um, vertical rays. So if we look at this here, if we would have ended up in this trapezoid in the beginning, now we still have to split by our new segment SI if we are above or below. Or if we would have ended up in this trapezoid before, this would be here, now we still have to divide to the left and right with RI first, and then on the left side divide again with the segment SI. So this is our new data structure. And building this data structure, we can do an order of n log n expected time, and it is expected size order of n and expected query time order of log n. That we will prove in the next part. But first we want to show that it is correct. And for that we need some invariant. And the invariant tells us that before step i, this is always a trapezoidal map for our segments si minus 1 and d is a valid search structure for t. So before we do this step going from here to here, everything is fine. That is clear in the beginning. You can either start with a single segment and just look at it and say this is okay, or you just start with no segment and say, okay, I only have a rectangle, of course it's valid. And then as long as whatever we do in this step here, we only destroy trapezoids that are intersected by S, and what we do locally here, the changes we do locally, still are valid, then this whole thing is still correct. And that's very easy to show. But the expected running times, they are a bit more tricky. And we want to start with the query time in the next part. The analysis is quite similar to the 1D case, but it's uh, quite more involved. And from that, we will get the construction time. So if the size is order of n and the query time is order of log n, then the construction time of order of n log n will immediately follow. 